Hi, my name is Sean Olson. I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to use some of the new tools in Wallworm, in specific some tools in a new product called Wallworm Pro. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how the Wallworm exporter can now export DMX files, and I'm also going to show you how to make flex objects and wrinkle maps. So in this video we're going to work on this uh, cat girl. She's not complete. I was making her for this video, but uh, I think we're at a stage where we can demonstrate this. What we need to do is create morph targets. And we're going to start with her head. We're just going to work with her head right here. I'm going to take her teeth and her face. And I'm just going to copy these. I'm going to shift drag. And I'm going to do this two times. That's enough for this tutorial. And we're going to isolate the selection to just these. Okay. Okay, now we have the original head and we have these two others. What we need to do is name these. I'm going to name this second head Angry. And I'm going to name this other one Surprised. And you can have as many of these as you need for your uh, setup and for different uh, facial uh, expressions for um, pronunciations and phenomes and visums. But right now we're just going to demonstrate these um, two targets here. So what I'm going to do first is take our head here and add a morpher modifier. And also this will work with Morphomatic, but Morpher is the one that comes with Max. And for the first one, I'm going to pick the Angry. I'm going to go to the second channel and pick the Surprise. Now what we need to do is go in and actually morph these. So in the Angry one, we want to just edit her face so she looks a little angry. And you can use whatever tools in Max you would uh, normally use. So I'm going to use pinch pull here. I'm going to pinch this a little bit on both sides here and wrinkle her nose up a little bit. We might uh, shift her nose out some. I'm just I hit a few places on the on the model here. So I skipped all the actual sculpting of her face here. So now we have an angry, an angrier look, semi-happy, an angrier look, and now we're going to make the other one look surprised. And I'll skip ahead. So I've skipped forward a little bit. Now we have these two targets in our morph channel, angry and surprise. And in 3ds Max, we can always morph between these and uh, see the differences here. And our goal is to export these into 3ds Max. Before we do that, we're going to create a wrinkle map. We're going to make one for compressing the face when he's angry. And we're going to make one to stretch the face a little when she's surprised. In the next phase, we're going to work in the material editor. This is Slate, the material editor. Here's the default material we have to begin with. Now to make this a little bit easier and to for the rest of this process, we're going to select all of these objects and we're going to go to the materials and hit add WW to selected mats and editor. It's going to do a few things. You'll notice that the textures now have a custom attribute, the wallworm texture CA, and the material has a wallworm material CA. First, we're going to go into the material and to make this work for um, wrinkle maps, we have to change the shader type to Fong. We need to check for model, make sure that this is vertex, vertex lit generic. Next, we're going to go into the normal map and go down to these wallworm texture properties. We want to make sure that the normal map flag is checked. At this point in time in Wallworm Pro, most of these options don't actually work yet. They're in progress and will be out and available soon. We want this to be the bump map. 
So what we're going to do now is select this mod this material and copy it. I'm going to name this compress material. And I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to name this one stretch material. In reality, all we're interested in is the, the bitmap textures and the diffuse channel for now. I'm going to apply the compress one to this model and the stretch one to this. And notice that they went gray immediately. That's fine. What we need to do is double click the material and hit show in viewport. So double click this material and show in viewport. There we go. Now, for this bitmap, I'm going to render it as a new version. I'm going to call this Compress TGA. And it's going to render that out as a new bitmap. Take a second here. And the same thing with this one. Render map into this one we want to do stretch. Name it stretch. The actual name is irrelevant, but it's easier to understand what's going on down the road. Okay, so now we have these maps rendered out. I'm going to rename this bitmap so it's easier to know what it is. Cat Warrior Stretch and Cat Warrior Compress. Now I need to load the rendered bitmaps into this bitmap channel. So I'm going to click here and this one is the Compress and this one is the stretch. I need to load the ones that we just rendered. So they're brand new bitmaps. And that's important because we're going to paint onto those bitmaps to change them. So I'm just going to double check my bitmap paths to make sure I don't have the original bitmap in here. And I'm actually going to change this to be compressed also down here because this is the path where it will output to. And again, stretch TGA, compress TGA. Okay, we're set to go. I'm going to close the material editor now. And now I'm going to select the angry face. Now I'm going to isolate the angry face. I don't have the teeth in here. here. And we're going to paint them with the viewport canvas. So when it's angry, I'm going to say that this uh, creature, the skin gets a little bit reddish. Let's do it like that. And we're going to draw some uh, crink crinkles in the face here. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to blend these a little bit here. Okay, I think I'm done with this layer and the angry face. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to go in and uh, make the mouth a little bit more blood red.
So at this point, I'm done with this texture. I'm going to flatten it. Okay, and now we need to do the same thing with the stretch model and its texture. So I'm going to paint on this stretch. I'm just going to lighten this guy up a little bit. And really, I think that that's all I'm going to do here for this one is just lighten it up. So now, when we go to when we want to apply this different textures to different areas of our model during the uh, flexes we have to tell we have to give it a wrinkle map and to do that here's what you do you select your model and add a vertex paint modifier to it you right click the layer hit rename and name it wrinkle And then you just paint onto the model the blend weights. So this one's going to be, we're going to compress this one. So we need to paint black as black is the compression. What we want to do first is paint it all gray. Because gray is perfectly flat and paint it all gray and then we go and go to black and paint the black where all the places where we want it to be stretched so wherever we want the the color to be derived from our stretch texture We just paint on here. We're painting the weights on. All right. Now we need to do the same thing with our other guy. And for this one, again, we add a vertex paint modifier. Right click, hit rename, rename it to wrinkle. I'm going to go in and paint or paint bucket, everything at solid gray, excuse me that's the wrong value, solid gray so I dump paint all, then I go to the compress which is all white and for this one we're going to paint just give it a subtle a subtle lighter color around the eyes. I'm going to close out all of these, close out the viewport canvas, and we have a little bit more work to do in the material editor. We want this to be set as a compressed texture. Oop, excuse me. That is our stretch. And we want this one to be a compress. And for the one up here that we had as bump, we also want this to be set to bump compress and stretch compress, bump stretch. If you don't have those uh, stretch commands or a bitmap with these, uh, if you don't have a material that designates a normal map for your bump and stretch, it's not going to work, so that's kind of important. So the next thing that makes this a the next easiest thing to do is drag our compress and our stretch over here to our sample slots. We're going to go over to our main material on the Cat Warrior model. We're going to go to the extra maps. I'm going to hit add and I want to choose the compress as an instance and I want to choose the stretch as an instance. So we have these two extra textures being brought in when I export the material. Now, I'm just going to export this model. 
I'm going to open up while we're model tools. I'm going to click on my main mesh here. I'm going to tell it to export as DMX. I'm going to put all of these things in a folder called Cat Warrior. I'm going to turn off static prop. And then I'm going to select any part of the model that should be part of this. In a later video, I'm going to show how to set these up as body groups and different things uh, to turn on or off. But for the moment, we're going to just um, add these. Now we need to export the textures. Anything that has not been exported yet will automatically be checked. If there's repeat, it'll be grayed out because it's the same texture from above. And these ones don't have textures. They're just materials for right now. I'm going to go ahead and add export. Once the materials are done, we need to go export the model. Now this is kind of important if you have um, a model that was made in another uh, application or if you have different uh, parts of your model, such in this case I have a head that's separate from the body and you needed to smooth out the normals and you needed it, I did that with an edit normals modifier you need to make sure you use the explicit normals option when you go to export. Double check we have DMX set and we're just going to export our model. So it took me a couple minutes to compile and here's our model. I have added an animation into the model so you can see um, this in action here and if we go into the flex tab if we change to angry, you're going to see that the face not only changes its shape, but also changes its texture. Same with our surprised. If we go to surprised, it's light along the cheekbones because that's the area we wanted it to lighten up at. And if we do both of these, you'll see kind of a mixture of the compress and stretch. So in the upcoming videos, I'll explain some more of uh, the processes you go about setting up your rigs to export into source. And this rig actually is using CAT from 3ds Max. And that's something that will um, be discussed in a, in a future video. As CAT is a really cool animation tool. So with Wallworm, you can use both Morpher uh, modifiers and you can use Morphomatic and you can also use cat to animate your scene. So in, inside of Max, just briefly to show you, we have this animation. You can see that the animation is done here it, with cat. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about how Wallworm Pro can enhance uh, your um, workflow with the Source Engine. My name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at SeanOlson.net and always get the latest version of Wallworm, including Wallworm Pro from Wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.